So in this video, I'm going to talk about five actions you can take um, before starting a brand new piece, before you actually even press down the first key. So away from the instrument. I find these actions uh, crucial. You know, it's like preparing a room before our guest, um, the composer, um, stays for a while and inhabits it. As a sign of respect, uh, we want to be a good host. So we prepare the room and we give the piece the best conditions before we start. If you want to find out more about these steps you can take um, away from the instrument, um, then keep watching. So the first thing you want to do is uh, get a little bit of um, background story, you know, find out more about the composer, maybe his life, um, the time of his life, where he composed that piece, um, together with which other pieces, listen to his orchestral works, um, vocal music, uh, chamber music, and so on. You put your, your mind into the world of the composer. So if, for example, you're learning a Beethoven sonata, then do listen to his symphonies. Or if you're learning Mozart piece, then listen to his operas. So let's say that the piece you're starting to learn is um, by Tchaikovsky. It's called October. It's part of a cycle, actually. Let's say that's our piece today. So Tchaikovsky was born in 1840. I just looked it up to be sure. And um, he composed this piece in 75, or this set of pieces. So... My math is not the best, but I can work out that he was 35 when he composed that. And if I want a little bit more of background story, I know that he started composing it allegedly after uh, he premiered his first piano concerto. And, um, you know, this very obscure piece that no one knows of. <laughs> and... Um, while he was composing this set of pieces, he was also working on or completing his ballet, Swan Lake, that you probably also know. And um, yeah, so, you know, if you're working on that piece, maybe listen to Swan Lake. Put yourself in that, in that context, you know, it's like, um, it's like, <laughs> it's like smelling the wine. For a little while before before you actually take a sip. So the second thing you want to do is see if you can associate that piece with other works of art. The most obvious ones would be maybe paintings or poetry, literature, sculptures. So in the case of our October song piece, I found this beautiful Van Gogh painting that is called Autumn. Actually, in the Russian edition of the set of pieces, there is um, an, a small extract, I believe, of a poem by Tolstoy. All right, I'm going to read a little bit, not all of it. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Our garden stands flowerless and bare, dizzy whirling yellow leaves. Fill the wind-swept air, yet the distant mountain ash in the vale below now begins to glow. Through my tears I see that I can never tell thee how dear thou art to me. So you see already you have these elements that um, transport you or, or teleport you into, I don't know if that's a word, in, into the world of, of this piece, into the atmosphere. And you haven't even played a note yet. The next thing you would want to do is to read the score like a book. First of all, all you need is good lighting, a comfortable chair, your score and a pencil. Try to read the notes and start to hear them in your head the way you think it should sound. What kind of sound do you want? What is the mood? Where does the first part end? Try to sing it in your head. Imagine a storyline, metaphors, images, whatever goes through your head 
and write it down, write everything down on the score. Actually, it's magical. You're starting to see so many new things, so many different colors uh, and images. And um, as my teacher used to say, you're starting to actually develop an inner ear. To give you an example, um... Here's the score, and I wrote down a few thoughts. So I, this is the first phrase, this is the second phrase, two plus two. Um, for me, this is more of a, you know, obviously it's a human voice to me, and then this is more of an inner speech. And here it's like a questioning. It's hopeful. And again, asking the same question, maybe it was a little bit more insistence um, and so on. I'm just writing down randomly my thoughts. And then here we have the the chromatic descent. Uh, it can sound like lamentations, you know, or soft cries was also the emphasis um, on the weak beats was the accents. sing the melody completely by itself so since you don't have to work out all of the notes you can really focus on the phrasings and how you want to shape it it's really just you know and, and also it gives you right from the start this overall view of of the landscape if you will it's it's like uh, if you imagine an eagle i really like this image also coming from my beloved teacher but this eagle who flies above the landscape from above and he has an overall view of everything and doesn't see tree by tree or house by house but he sees the whole complete picture and then the last thing you want to do is get familiar with the main keys of the piece so in this case we are in d minor so you need to be just a little bit more patient before you finally start to work on the piece um you know to warm up with in that case d minor you know you can do the scale, of course, uh, arpeggios, broken chords, all of that stuff. And that way you're already sort of bathing, bathing a bath <laughs> in the main key. You know, each key has a different personality and color, in my opinion. And so by starting to warm up with those scales and so on, you're already tuning into the key of your, of your piece. <laughs> towards that goal 
that you build yourself in your mind before starting instead of just um, aimlessly go through the notes and probably also painfully going through the notes one by one and I think this is the start of what interpretation means also it will give you so much confidence once you end up performing it because you, you drew a map in your mind so next time you're starting a new piece then give it a try and, and let me know how it goes